Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast, and this is an Awesome Cast special for you coming up this weekend. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of talk, a lot of Twitter talk, and I, I don't like to monopolize a lot of uh, the show with like huge social media like for the entire time or anything like that. And it was more of an industry speak kind of thing. Uh, so Katie Dudas is with me here in the Mayhem Studio at K Dudders on the Twitter. Hello. And just to qualify, she is, uh, what, what's your official position over there at the Scarehouse? Director of Sales and Marketing. The Director of Sales and Marketing, which includes social media mm-hmm. and, and, and figuring that out. And you've been a big part of that for several years, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you want to elaborate on what all that you kind of uh, touch on over there and, and working with other people over the years. Oh, gosh. Um, I have a lot of background on uh, social media. Actually, my uh, schoolwork was in um, communication technology from Point Park. And then um, over at Scarehouse, it's it's a lot of analyzing trends and seeing where things are going and, and the importance of social uh, media sales now. And it's just the marketing side of things has just exploded. And, and it's it's so much of an opportunity to reach those core fans and what they want and what they need, uh, which is I, I really enjoy doing. And, and just the creativity, especially on that side of things, is, is just a blast, you know, be able to people like princess holly into reading kanye tweets or teaching us how to flirt like a victorian i was watching the flirt with a victor like a victorian <laughs> video yesterday i was like oh there's more they did more that day okay oh, gosh, <laughs> it's yeah. amazing um and of course uh, you know we we also work together with sidekick media services providing social media services uh work with some clients myself working with uh Seclair and several clients over the years um through sorgatron media uh, so I, I figure, you know, okay, getting us together, we work in this space, you know, you know we, we, you had some things to say about this. So, mm-hmm. uh, so uh, you know, maybe people are hearing parts of stories, some of the stories, not all the stories. Uh, how would you sum up what all is going on with uh, Twitter right now to start us off? I think uh, the first major thing that we heard a few weeks ago was Twitter was going to change. I think it's been months now. Twitter was going to change character count. There's, there's been rumblings for yeah. a bit. Yeah. There, the things, and that was like, oh, that's interesting. And everybody kind of was wondering what was going on with that. And then recently, um, they've talked about the change in the timeline. And at one point, the timeline had gone, was not chronologic, well, chronological. Like, this is how long some of us have been on Twitter. There was a point where this was not chronological. It was more of what you were looking for. Um, maybe people you interacted more. And now they want to go back to that old style. There's an algorithm. And as soon as you say algorithm, people kind of like panic because Facebook has kind of trained us to because they have a very complex algorithm, especially if you're in social media marketing. You're, you're trying to, each time you post an ad or you boost a post and you're just like, okay, well, how am I going to do this? So I reach the most people, what's going to, Facebook going to block me? You know, when, do I have enough, too much text? It, you know, there's a million thoughts going into that. So you say algorithm and you, you get nervous to begin with. And then, um, I think what's the other thing that, oh, the, even discussion getting rid of the at before, um, our names. I was like, what is this? Mm-hmm. I mean, total change. Um, a lot of this is stemming from the fact that the Twitter stock has plummeted. And the reason it has plummeted is Twitter's kind of plateaued off um, as places like Facebook continue to grow in the millions and the billions. Um, Twitter is kind of plateaued off and you have your users and your core users and people are panicking. The investors are worried. Uh, they're And it, it, being in the industry, you know that if you don't evolve or change, you die. And we've seen it with a million things like, for example, MySpace. Um, even places like Ello, you know, they, they didn't kind of figure out their niche or what they were doing and they dropped off. So everybody's kind of panicking in the world of Twitter or people that use Twitter. So it's kind of where we're at today. Like where, how, my thoughts are like, how, how should everybody, should we be panicked? Are we, you know, especially as social media marketers, should we be concerned? So that's kind of the conversation today. Right, right. And this is something that, again, it, it's been, it's been something that we've, we've been on for a long time. I think I started my account in 2007. We actually are friends because of Twitter, for mm-hmm. the most part, yes. <laughs> between me meeting each other at PodCamp Pittsburgh, and then and that those conversations continuing, and 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 now we're working together. You know, uh, so I, I think that you know, you know, the there's definitely been a social impact. Obviously, Twitter is everywhere. Uh, you know, it, it, it's part of the culture. It's part of the social media online culture, I guess you could say. And 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 my first instinct is, you know, because other than these changes, there's been a lot of discussion on the shows that I listen to um, that are about, you know, the IPO and, and, and the public trade and that. And it seems like a lot of it is reaction to that um, to the point where I, I feel like, 
you know, maybe they're reacting to something. Maybe they're changing something that isn't actually broken. Because when you get to that world where you're publicly traded and you have to, uh, you know, in comparison, I think I talked about this briefly on Awesome Cast this past week. Uh, you know, Apple is uh, their stocks down, mm-hmm. but they're still the they still have more profits than they had last year. They're still the, one of the most. I think they are the most profitable company. They just lost the most valuable company to Google or well, Alphabet, technically, mm-hmm. like this past quarter, like announced last week, I think. So I, I there's that reaction thing. You're not, you know, Wall Street kind of has this. I want to say illogical. Like it's it's around. They want their stocks to pump up so they can make money. Yeah. And 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 they look for growth. If there's no chance for growth, I feel Apple's in trouble quotes quotation marks <laughs> because they can't find more people to sell iphones to because most of us have them already that are going to buy them and that's why they're expanding out to markets like china because there's a whole billions of people seven billion people that don't have iphones yet or they're getting them illegally or they're you know getting knockoffs um you know and that's that's kind of the mentality that i think leads to this um and twitter has never really been accessible right mm-hmm. like You've you've had experience of trying to explain it to people. It's it, well, first this is this is scary because when you're building a social media marketing plan, your two big platforms usually are Facebook and, and Twitter. This yeah. is like this is our these are our rocks at this point, right? And um, but when Facebook is easy to explain. I mean, there's it's very simple. You put it out, people see it. There's no complex like I only have 140 characters. I have a name that's kind of odd. This is what's a sad sign and. <laughs> And especially it's, it's difficult to explain its value because a lot of times when you look at a Twitter stream and I'm no different than anyone else, uh, mine's filled with food and cats and, and things that just might not be like, why would I care what you have to say about this pizza? But, um, <laughs> which everybody should care what we say about pizza because we are pizza experts, but you're, it's just not, it's hard to sell the value sometimes of Twitter. And, um, it's especially with people who have never seen it before or seeing it the first time. And it just, it's, it's very weird looking. It's, it's, it's almost awkward when you first use it and you essentially are saying things to no one. You're just in an empty room saying whatever you're saying. It's like, it's like a monologue. Yeah. Until somebody starts responding and then it turns into a conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, or, or, you know, over the years, you know, again, being through, through, through Twitter for, for several, several years, um, you know, this is something that's been refer- referred to as microblogging, for instance, oh, yeah. is one, one early term that, that it was explained as. Um, and also thinking about how, uh, you know, we, well, 140 characters, that seems so arbitrary, right? The at sign seems so weird. The hashtag is an odd thing, right? Mm-hmm. And they're kind of, and that's kind of led to the weirdness. But remember, Twitter was made when all, we didn't have iPhones. There were no iPhones. <laughs> iPhones was just in a lab somewhere and it was called the iPod phone or something, right? You know, it was a glimmer in Steve Jobs' eye at that point. And we had flip phones. We had T8 texting. Mm-hmm. We had really horrible, uh, 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 well, we had Blackberries were kind of the thing. They were the lucky tweeters. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and it was a, it, it was basically built around the text bridge. There were a lot of apps that were coming out. I don't know if you remember Bright Kite was one of them. Yeah. I think Think, think of Forebear to uh, Foursquare, but in order to check in, you had to learn all of the text commands, and it was all over SMS, just text, not MMS, multimedia messaging, mm-hmm. SMS, text messages, which I believe is limited to 180 characters, so they limited it to 140, so if you were to sign up and start getting those as text, you'll see the, the, the functions are still there, um, and it will give you instructions and tips in those extra 20 characters to help you acclimate to the service right mm-hmm. um and that's kind of where we're at it's things like the at reply and the cash tag kind of grew from us doing it like from the community and twitter just kind of co-opted it and made it a function in the site and made it mean a little bit more when you go to twitter.com mm-hmm. i guess because uh, it was more of a visual cue than something you could just actually click on originally right yeah it was i believe yeah it was it was a lot more Oh, gosh. Just so you could identify in your yeah. feed that somebody's talking to you? Yeah. Because we didn't have... Nobody had millions of people in their feed. No. Like 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 some people do, too. I mean, I, I'm looking... I probably follow about a thousand people. I try to keep it there. Yeah. <laughs> for yeah. the most part. Oh, my gosh, yeah. So, um, but, you know, that's the kind of... That's kind of what we're dealing with right mm-hmm. now. Um, so... Twitter has obviously done wonders over the years trying to make that accessible to people. Mm-hmm. And... Now, you know, I, I talked about the uh, the uh, 
uh, IPO, public trading kind of aspect of it, mm-hmm. they are in a little bit of trouble because they saw no net growth in the last quarter of users. Not that like a bunch of them went away or anything. There's people signing up every day. But that net number of, of people using it did not increase. Mm-hmm. And that's, it's not going anywhere. Are they done? Do, are we going to see it start to peter off? You know, are people done with Twitter? And I'm kind of worried. I'm always worried when we get to this point that the, uh, all the stories become a self-fulfilling policy, pro, uh, self-fulfilling prophecy because everybody's like, oh, Twitter's dead. Right. And they stop using it. Yep. Right. So, and like I, I did pulled up a time article and the title is why Twitter's final days has the ring of truth. That's that should kind of make you nervous, especially if, like I said, your core use is is, is social media marketing, and, and right. this is how you connect. And part of Twitter's thing is the other thing is is there's so many other um, apps out there. There's so many different social media platforms that you're already challenged to find where your audience is. What you know, who is my audience? What you're thinking? Okay, what's the demographics? What's the age group? What what kind of device are they on? Are they on their computers are they on their phones are they on a tablet so then you have to optimize for that and there's so much that goes into it it's not just like oh i'm going to go with this because it's easiest it's well how am i reaching my audience and how am i going to connect with people because if all your friends leave twitter and they're all on you know for example we'll use peach as an example if I, my friends move over there for the conversations i'm going to go with them peach <laughs> well or we just bring back plurk and we tried we, we were all on plurk for a little bit too which is another kind of weird social media and I think the, where Twitter has the advantage is, again, like how it started with, with texting. It's the thing that everybody can get easy. Mm-hmm. It, if you're into it, you get a message. It's not too big. It's like it's, it's not like Facebook where you're like, oh, my mom wrote a really, 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 really long post, and maybe I'll get to that later. You know, mm-hmm. you, you read it and before you have even contemplated it, mm-hmm. right? And we're adding these little bits of multimedia features. It's something that on a Pebble watch that just gets text. You know, this is the new text messaging, right? Mm-hmm. You can still get it on here. And it's uh, it's telling me something that's not text, apparently. Um, You know, you can still get it on here. And it's like, oh, okay. You know, and you understand it. And it's visual. And it's right now. It's that quickness. And, you know, one of the first things we mentioned was growing that character base, right? Mm -hmm. And and I I think that just turns it into between that and some of the stuff they're doing in the web and this algorithm thing that they're talking about. It turns it into Facebook. It turns it into all of these other platforms. And nothing becomes special about it anymore. And um, when, when you're looking at that and, and just they've partnered, for example, they partnered with Periscope. They're working with Periscope and that's how well, they own it, actually. Yeah. So they, they own the, the streaming site and which they had to, you know, that was this was a lot of we've been when we started out with Twitter. We had we were lucky if we had photos in the first how many years, because that was not something that was part of it. And it, it is evolving. It's just not you know you come into facebook everybody does it like you said everybody has a facebook page anybody can have a facebook page um twitter just i'm trying to think the best way to describe i mean i'm blanking out completely <laughs> that's fine <laughs> sorry i was like i had a thought and then i looked at something i looked at something on twitter and it made me lose my thought and that's the part of the problem too hello periscope yeah. well, we were on periscope and again a great product that i think they do and now you see facebook doing another thing and again you think why am i using facebook live versus twitter it's it's which audience is where yeah, and, and, and as a social media strategist you know you know it is a different kind of audience you know that 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 interacts with that you know, the attention spans are certainly different mm-hmm. and there's ad bases on both of them. And, and the way that they, the more uh, Facebook obviously knows more about you because the way you interact with it. Um, and I think it's where Twitter is kind of looking over at grass is greener on the other side and saying, we want that information mm-hmm. so we can sell that, you know, oh cause I mean, I hear about Twitter dark posts all the time and everything and what you could do with that. And, 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 would I say Twitter dark post on my yeah. Facebook? Um, <laughs> could you imagine a Twitter dark post? That'd be insane. Uh, but 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 there's all these weird things happening, and I think the problem is we look at these things. Now let's go into the part where we're marketers. Mm-hmm. Um, we look at these things, and I have a biz. Even though I'm just a person that you know, I'm I'm Feenies Weenies, or I'm brewing Broadway up here. Mm-hmm. I'm a small business. It's like I'm going to do the Facebook thing. I was like, okay. And me as just a small business person that doesn't necessarily understand marketing at large, uh, then I have to figure out Facebook, Twitter. Twitter is easy. It goes out. Mm -hmm. You know that people are following you and they saw it. Mm -hmm. You know 150 people follow you and they saw it if they're looking at their stream. Uh, It goes away. Mm -hmm. Facebook, you hear the word algorithm. You're like, all right, I posted. Did anybody see that? And you have no idea. I mean, Mm -hmm. it was stats come through and you're like, why how how did 10 people see this and mm-hmm. not not the 100 people that follow us you know or, or wherever those numbers stand and we i know we've had conversations about reach demographic stuff what we're getting from there and and how to 
be nice to the Twitter algorithm mm-hmm. that they'll put our stuff out there and help that out without us having to shell out money for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's that unknown. And if a tweet doesn't be, if a tweet is no longer just a tweet that goes out, I think that muddies the waters on this side of things. And then that's why everybody worries. That's why us as a whole on the marketing side are like, what, what do we do? What do we do? Mm-hmm. And I think it's, it's the same thing as it's Facebook. We, we, when you're uh, post posting about your business on Facebook, you didn't think about ads. You didn't about, think about promoted posts. And then you learned about the algorithm and you learned that unless I don't I put money out there, people are not going to see my post. And the same thing with Twitter. That's, you know, it's, it's a money based thing. And obviously everybody wants to make money. And that's the one thing I constantly forget about. And I think most marketers do too, is the fact that they owe us nothing. There's no, nothing. No. Twitter, Facebook, all these social media platforms owe us nothing. They, we, we, I mean, we grow the business for them and we, you know, we're staying on there and they, you know, they have numbers and they can show it. But in the end of the day, they have, they owe us nothing. And, um, but the, when you were talking about the, the, the information that Facebook has about all of us and, and it's great because they can sell these to third parties and they make money that way too. Um, time Inc just bought MySpace. And just like everything that you posted, how many years ago, is now property of somebody else. Mm-hmm. That, and they could easily, and this is my thought process: is they could easily take some sort of statistic that they find is interesting, and then compare it to my Facebook now, and say, you know what, she was interested in X, Y, and Z, and she turned out to do this, or she, you know, had these purchases. She she was bragging about buying her first phone at their whatever at this point, or this her first iPhone then, and now she has how many iPhones later it's just it's it's interesting because this information is out there and we're giving it freely mm-hmm. um a, a comment from the periscope Alex Cars, our a buddy out in California <laughs> uh of course he says uh he thinks that uh, I, I think he said the concerning thing um there's periscope you know your your comment goes away and I can't get around to it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there is a bug uh but anyways uh, he's saying he thinks that the first uh the first uh, post that we see that are going more than 140 characters are probably going to be ads but that's the way it goes uh look at how Instagram goes where like the carousels and everything um you know those features came up as ads first eventually trickled down to us Facebook Live, a video streaming thing that I use all the time now, started as the famous people got to use it. Mm-hmm. And now it's trickling down to us and hopefully eventually pages so we can use it for our business because I got some really cool ideas to use it there, you know, as a business. You know, I want to, like, if we're Facebook Living this, I want that to go as Awesome Cast to Facebook and all those followers to get that as a notification. Um, but no, I, I'm with you. Yeah, they don't owe us anything. Um, but. I, and I think it's also important to remember, as we were talking about a little bit before the show, this is an industry that didn't exist like five years ago. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, there's Twitter and everything, but there wasn't a massive, like, could you have gone to Point Park and be talking about social media and concentrating on communities in that way? Really? I, I mean, it, yeah. I think that shows, you know, that that they're offering stuff like that. And I've gone in and talked to Patty Swisher's mm-hmm. uh, class. Our buddy Doug just did talking yeah. about social media, talking about video online. I mean, even video online wasn't really an industry six years ago and now look what i'm doing yeah you know what i mean I, it, it's 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 brand new so sitting there and, and you got into it and you're worried that that's going away in a couple years myspace was a thing remember <laughs> you know i mean I, I keep going back i i did how much stuff on myspace I was booking band shows. I was uh, communicating with people for the podcast. That's where our first community was for our podcast was mm-hmm. MySpace. That's whole, how old podcasting is. And and that's ever changing, you know. Uh, it, it's it's going to we're dependent on these bigger companies. They're going to get bought, they're going to evolve, uh, de-evolve in some cases probably. Um, and and we're kind of betting the farm if you're betting your farm on on Facebook and Twitter, you know, that's a that's a scary place to be, and I hope you're keeping an eye out. But you can't just like I got my Twitter strategy. We're good. Yeah. Right. I uh, went to a guy a couple years ago that he had his website. He's like, I spent all this money for this website three years ago. He had a newsletter. He had all this stuff. I was like, great, that worked three years ago. You need to do it again. You know, you got to keep up with this, or you're going to fall behind. And very much on the web and 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 web presence side, they had definitely fallen behind there. Yeah, and it just I started kind of peeking at this whole um, time article because I had I just found it. And they're talking about how many people actually loathe Twitter because 
for example, it, it's an instant way to attack another person. It's, it's right. It, that's part of the problem is, is, you know, between hashtags and tweeting. I mean, I'm at K Dutters on Twitter. If you don't know, that's me. I could say whatever I wanted to anybody. And right. there's no filter. No. And, 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 and the other thing on top of that is um, they're, they are definitely trying to squash uh, by their choice. They're, they're very much, we want to be free speech. Everybody can say anything, but if something like um, ISIS or whatever we're calling it these days, um, they're squashing accounts left and right, but you can kind of the beauty and the, and the pain of Twitter is you can just make a new account. Like mm-hmm. it's not, it's not an issue. There's nothing really to stop you. And they're just now starting to kind of look at stuff like that. I was actually just reading an article on medium earlier. The actress that uh, was in gone girl, uh, she came, I wouldn't say she came out, but she, she um, showed her support for Bernie Sanders. Mm-hmm. And the article was analyzing how people attacked her. And, you know, of course we're talking about celebrities. So I think there's this, I think, I, I kind of made the the horrible comment to, about one of the wrestlers on the shows that like, oh, it's OK. She's not real people. She's a wrestler. And I, I don't mean that as she shouldn't be treated as a person. I mean, her perception is different. Mm-hmm. Right. As somebody who's in movies and and unfortunately, people, you know, automatically turned it because she was a model, took her top off in some music video or something. And that's where it went. But again, like the trolls are out there. The trolls are going to be out there. You don't have a real name policy. Um, but again, that's kind of what we liked about Twitter. And unfortunately that's what the bad actors like about Twitter too. Mm-hmm. So, and, 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 and I can understand just like the, um, just like the voice chat on Xbox 360's uh, call of duty uh, rooms. Um, it's not a good place to be. <laughs> and it can turn off a lot of people from even trying when a seven year old's uh, telling me words that I barely even knew they were so filthy. Um, you know, you like, I don't want to, be here for this and and i can see that definitely happening for twitter as well and we 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 are very lucky because we have a number of followers on twitter already and that we know we can interact with people already and um like a 2013 study found that the median user had just 61 followers and how difficult it can be to gain followers especially on twitter if you're you know if you're not sure what you're doing you're just like we've talked about we just talked Mm -hmm. in a room and you're like hey somebody and there's nothing to explain. Use your hashtags. Use this. They, they mm-hmm. when you sign up for Twitter, and I haven't done it lately, but I know as of like a year ago, you go in and like, uh, what do you like? You like movies? Here's a bunch of here's a bunch of things for movies. Hey, do you like news? You like politics? You like sports? Here's a bunch of stuff for you to follow. So you at least can populate that timeline. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if the emphasis is and and hey, interact with those things. It's it's not really made to just be a lurker, you know, unless you know where to look for things. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they're definitely making strides. There's a lot more. Remember when the Twitter site was just like the the world timeline? Yeah. And that was it. Like, absolutely, that was it. And we live in a world where where whenever there's an app that comes out, I mean, we've seen this so many times with the Awesome Cast. Like, here's a giant picture of something or maybe a moving video in the background. We don't actually show you anything, yeah. you know. And, and, and that's what, you know, Twitter's coming around to. Hey, here's everybody talking about things on here. Hey, look, this is the place to be for a conversation, right? Mm-hmm. So... Uh, so they're making those kinds of straws. Mo- moments is another thing that they've been doing. Have you poked a lot at moments? I have not because I figure it's more for new people. I like moments. Um, it sounds funny, but I, I like moments whenever I've kind of exhausted my feed. Like if I'm like, oh, you're man. looking for things to read yeah. at that point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because um, when I, for example, when I get up in the morning, one of the first things I look at is um, Facebook because I, I, I prefer Facebook to kind of get lost in some stories and see what people are doing. And then Twitter follows that one. And then depending on what time I'm up, I'm like, oh, wait, moments. Let's see what's going on here. What, what are people talking about? And Twitter, I do love the um, – they brought back – or brought in that um, while you were away. Yes. And it seems to know the people that I'm actually interested in. It yes. At the beginning, it didn't. It was just kind of – it mm. felt very random. But now it's it's like – It took time off. to learn you. It's, it's you know, Sorgatron Media. It's um, Shire – you know, people that I'm close with. Mm. I want to touch on the on, on the while you're away, but but moments I think we should explain. Okay. It's kind of a um, I have it pulled up here if you guys are on video. It's kind of a an, uh, curated like this is what people are talking about. For instance, I'm pulling up now and it's saying World News Live. Uh, Pope Francis visits Mexico, and there he is with a funny looking Mexico Mexico hat. That's probably offensive to somebody. I'm sorry, um, but we go in and there's like somebody with a video. There's people talking about. It. There's a there's a quick explanation from something like the Boston globe of what exactly the story is about in, in, in basically in a tweet uh multimedia people posting pictures of the visit um like this is this is great and you see that as well um we've talked about if you use hashtags like we use a hashtag for pro wrestling events for podcamp pittsburgh 
oh, this animated, and there's a little plane going, and you see where he went and everything. That's cool. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's turning it really into that multimedia presentation, whereas it used to be just texts how many years ago, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, while you're away, and I think when we talk about algorithms, like that's our first example, right? Really, other yeah. than other than people you should follow in our feed, and I agree with you, it's super helpful for me, especially when you have multiple accounts. <laughs> oh, it, 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 it can be absolutely helpful. Um, and, I, and, and all accounts that I've read so far, um, they're looking at, um, geez, I can't remember what they're, what they're um, so any algorithm things that they're doing and the ones that they're already rolling out are going to be like that. Because even I found myself going, finding a while you're away, um, click off to like at mentions or something mm -hmm. and then go back and realize, oh, while, while you're away, went away. I wanted to actually look through that. So I can't call it off on command. It's after you haven't been on for a while. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, been, that's been kind of interesting. And, and, and I think that's kind of a, this is the way it could be. The, the issue is they need to be clear about it. Absolutely. Like, what am I looking at here? Um, I think when promoted tweets came up, there was just a little bit of that, you know, what am I looking at? Is it, is it a friend? Is it something else? Why am I seeing this? Do you remember how annoyed we were with promoted tweets? When a little they first bit, came a little up? bit. And so now I, you barely notice them. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's, it's like, it's obvious that it's one of those things where it's obvious that I don't follow, but there's that pause now. Cause before it was like, it was blatantly like, Oh, wait a minute. This is not anybody like the same thing with Instagram. When they started having the, the ads on there, it was obvious. I didn't know these people. And, you know, my friends are not super trendy. Like, Oh, look at this outfit I put out. And like, who, who is this? And it was, it was like a sore thumb, you know, sticking out and going, Hey, I, I right. don't belong in your feet. But now they've gotten much better at that and putting things in there that I actually might be interested in. I'm kind of curious if I can find an ad right now on the video. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, so it, it's going to, I think any of these services are going to, uh, you know, first the shock of, Hey, something's different versus, uh, it's going to be cumbersome because it's the algorithm algorithm is still being tweaked, mm -hmm. right? Um, the, 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 the rules are still being made for what you're, what you're seeing out there. Uh, so what, okay. So what, let's bring it back around to, okay. Then as marketers, what should we be concerned with? What should we be looking forward to? What, what are kind of, uh, what's your idea of like, how are you looking forward on a platform like this? Um, in, in, in how are you kind of looking to adjust your strategy as you go? Um, I think. As of right now, I'm not in a panic mode with Twitter. It's it just it's not at a point where I'm at right now, and it's because I still feel it has value for the companies I work with and the organizations I work with. Um, at a point where it doesn't, then you kind of have to go, oh my gosh, um, where we where do we need to be at? And I'm I don't I don't see another social media platform rising up to take over Twitter right now. There is nothing out there that sticks out in my mind that goes, oh, this is going to be huge for everyone. Uh, there are like Snapchat's a big deal now especially with a certain age group the younger demographic and there's so many users on that but i don't ever see that taking over twitter right because it's not snapchat for example is hard to use <laughs> when you first look at snapchat you're like oh man people are doing really cool things with this how do i do this there's right. no instruction there's no how many times i go into you and say so how do i do that thing that this person is <laughs> doing and video. i show you and you're like oh you do this thing and you hold it on the face on your own face i'm like why would I have thought to do that? You know, there. You know, we talk about Twitter and and and, and trying to do more handholding. Snapchat needs the handholding. Holy crap! You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, how do you even keep up with something like that? Other than friends say, "Look at this thing I found out." Oh my gosh! It's it, that's which, one of the first questions whenever. Which is what Twitter was. Yeah, exactly how we did Twitter. It was like, uh, what, what, what's next, and how do you know what's next, and where should I be looking, and and where where should I be, who should I be following, and because it. In this world now, it, it takes a celebrity saying, I love this, to totally change right. the tide of the world. Meerkat, Periscope, Facebook Live, for instance. Yeah, YouTube stars. You right. know, they, they, they are on one particular platform or another, and the fans go with them, like we said before. And you just have to keep up with that. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, I just found I found an article I'm looking at now from 2012. What comes next is Facebook and Twitter slowly die out. <laughs> I don't think Facebook is really dying. Uh, I think what... It, well, this turns it into a different show, but Facebook, I don't think it's going to die. Is in no, yeah. they're going to turn into something else. You may be on something not called Facebook, and you're still on Facebook, whether it be WhatsApp, whether it be Instagram, whether yeah. it be whatever you put on your face with the Oculus Rift at this point, right? 
I mean, I don't. I, this, these are doomsaying articles, and I, I you really got to take those. It's just like, how is the government screwing you over today? Yeah. What in your house is killing you? How is your livelihood in social media marketing going to die with Twitter? You know that kind of thing. Uh, I I don't I don't know. I, it's it's relax, everybody. Just take a look at the landscape. Pay attention to the articles, but really, you know, kind of graze what's happening here as as you go. You know what? If, if you're already on Facebook, you're used to every like going in on Monday morning, ready to post your videos, make your posts, and you're like, oh, I changed something. You know, it's the something changed in the matrix, right? Mm-hmm. And and I think at this point, if that still if that still angers you, that you might be in the wrong profession for one thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that it, it, you know, th- th- this is all about change and trying to stay ahead of the curve. Um, you can't really ride the wave at this point. Um, you gotta, f- you gotta figure out where the crest of the wave is and, 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 and be on top of that. Right. It's, it's, it's such a world that if you are, you can't get obsessed into something because if, no. if you latch yourself too much onto something, you're, you're going to run into so many problems and, and just, and being out of touch for just a little bit, you're just like, what happened? And mm-hmm. where did this go? Where did, how did, you know, we were like 10 steps ahead of you. And then even like when you said, what's WhatsApp? That's huge internationally, and it hasn't taken off, taken off here as much. And so we're so even used to, like, Twitter and Facebook, which isn't even available worldwide. Right, right. <laughs> so now you're... And if you're somebody to think about that, we, we have a good friend that, that reached out and says, hey, do you know somebody in China? Because I want to figure out what they're using, you know, and kind of get an idea because their product is very international. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that's the kind of thing that, that they have to be very aware of uh, for those kinds of things. So... Um, I don't know anything else we want to touch on here before uh, before we we end the special. Uh, I, I hope we've kind of demystified and clarified and and dived into and hopefully alleviated people. Yeah. On on what they think about the social media landscape at this point. Anybody on Periscope that were uh, with us live, please let us know any uh, last minute comments or questions before we roll out of here. You got any any last things to to close on, Katie? Um, I think. Like, I, like you said, I think it's it's important to, especially in our field, to just kind of keep up with everything. And one of the things that I always say is is just because you're not using it personally doesn't mean somebody else isn't. And we get very narrow visioned and go, oh my gosh, you know, I, I use this so everyone has to use it. It's not right, true. Right. It's uh, uh, religion, politics, and social media platforms, right? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> and don't uh, don't talk about too many of those on social media. Oh then... boy. Oh boy. You're just asking for trouble. I have a very, very, very closed door policy on any of that stuff. So I don't it, even... It's amazing how many opinions that when you, when you think about it, and this is just me being more philosophical than anything, how many opinions go unheard daily because we bite our tongues because we know better. Because we just don't want to start some sort of big snowball. I don't effect. even bring up those topics in person with people. <laughs> no, no, it just because you can't have those the people that I want to stay good friends with. We just don't talk about those things. And that's, that's how I. That's how I, I have an eleven year marriage. That's that's successful. Because <laughs> we, we just we just don't nope, go that nope, way. Nope. We were like, oh, you're here. I'm here. Mm-hmm. We're happy. <laughs> Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> so, um, all right, on that note, thank you so much. Uh, Katie Dudas, at Katie Dutter, is on the Twitter. And, of course, check out scarehouse.com. Uh, she's got her hands in that. And as well as Sidekick C- Media. Blah sidekickmediaservices.com mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, a lot of stuff there uh, if you guys are somebody who needs help with your social media or video or, or content or whatever the case may be they have a lot of stuff going on there as well uh, of course I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitter sorgatronmedia.com for this and so many other shows awesomecast.net uh, this well, if you've not found this uh, this is going to be in the regular awesomecast feed go search for it on iTunes Stitcher if it ever comes up out of maintenance mode uh, spree <laughs> Uh, iHeartRadio, uh, wherever fine podcasts are, we're there as well. Over 285 episodes of awesomeness. And of course, awesome chat. We're talking with great podcasters, tech people, uh, 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 you know, social workers, mostly tech, social media minded over there. And all that's listed at awesomecast.net. For instance, we just recently talked to the co founder of livestream.com about their upcoming uh, camera. Uh, the Movi camera it has 4K and you control your live stream with your phone it's pretty amazing and as well as this past week talking to a fellow podcaster Professor Buzzkill learning about some history with him thank you so much for joining us uh, Katie has been my awesome co-host you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.